Hello, this is Justin from the Tech Train here. And as a teacher, I'm often creating tests and exams for my students, which can take a long time, not writing the questions, but in formatting the document to look nice. So how would it be if you could take a plain text file like this that you create in Notepad or on your mobile phone, and in just a few seconds, you manage to turn it into something like this. That is consistent, it is well laid out, it is beautifully formatted, and you don't have to spend all the time creating all the styles. I'll show you exactly how to do that in just a second. The Styles Gallery is something which, although it takes up a huge amount of space on the toolbar at the top of the screen, is often pretty much ignored by most people, it seems. Uh, and yet you can take a huge amount of advantage from this to save yourself time when creating tests. I'm going to show you how uh, this can uh, work, so the end result, and then I'll show you how to set it up to do this. So here I have uh, a simple test. Um, I've done this in Notepad. Um, there's no formatting at all, so you could easily write this uh, on your mobile phone or email it to yourself, just a plain text file uh, where you don't have to be sitting in front of Microsoft Word to do this. What I've done is just write, uh, obviously I need the student name at the top or the test title, some instructions, my questions, the number of marks available, and I've just put these um, apostrophes here, but you can use any symbol you like, for the number of lines that I want to be made available for the students to write on. So a two mark question will have two lines, a one mark one line, and a three mark three lines, of course. What I'm going to do is copy all of this text and paste it directly into Microsoft Word. There we go. But now using the gallery at the top, the styles gallery at the top, I can format this very, very quickly. For example, I'll click on the student name and select the name style. Click on the test title and choose the test title style. Click on the instructions and click on the instruction style. I'm going to uh, double click and hold my uh, control key down so that I can select all of the questions and click on the question style. Then I'm going to double click on all of the marks while holding control down and select the mark style. And then finally, I'm going to select all of these uh, apostrophes, which are the lines the students will be writing on. And then I'm going to click the answer style. So there we are. Within a few seconds, I've turned a plain text file into a nicely formatted document that provides consistency of style, consistency of layout. Um, and that's exactly what we want. So. How do we do this? How do we set it all up? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new document that has none of my predefined styles here whatsoever. And I'm going to show you exactly what to do. Let's take this document again and we'll paste this uh, into this document. I'm just going to uh, go to uh, the layout tab and just reduce the margins a little bit to uh, narrow. I prefer it that way. Um, there we are. And uh, now we've got the plain text um, document here. It's time to choose our style. So this is obviously something you'll need to do the first time uh, that you set this all up. But once you've set it up, it's there for good in every document that you uh, create from that point onwards. Your styles are there. So you can really, really easily create this uh, test or exam template very, very quickly. So let's start off with a student name. Uh, what I'd like is for this to be slightly larger. In fact, I'm going to have all the text uh, change from Calibri. I'm going to use uh, Arial Nova um, and I'm going to have default of size 12 for all of it, but that won't apply to certain parts. For example, student name needs to be fairly large because, well, let's be honest, they do tend to forget to put their name at the top of documents. Um, I'd also like to have a frame around this, so I'm going to use the borders tool to create a, an outside border, and I'm going to um, just shade that uh, as well. Uh, so there we are, we've now got the border section for the top. Let's choose the title font. Now there is a title font built into Microsoft Word, but I'm not going to use that. Uh, what I'm going to do is have this center aligned. I'm going to have this a little bit larger, or quite a lot larger. There we are, something like that, and that will do for my title. Instructions, well, the size of the font is going to be a little bit larger just to make sure they actually read it. I'm going to put a border around that, but I'm not going to shade that border. There we are. Right, the question is fine. That's already formatted uh, size 12 Arial Nova Lights. I'm fine with that. But the number of marks, this needs to be bold and it needs to be on the right hand side. 
Um, and then finally, each line that the student writes on, um, I want that to have a border around it and I want it to be shaded. Of course, I'm using a symbol here. As you'll see, I'm using the little apostrophe, but as I say, you can use any symbol you like. It really doesn't make any difference, but I don't want that to be visible, of course. So I'm going to select that as well and change the font st uh, color to the same size as the shading, so that's invisible. Now, students uh, need a little bit more room to write on, so uh, whereas size 12 is fine for the font on the computer, students will need a little bit more height for their handwriting. So each line will probably be, there we are, about size 22. That gives them plenty of uh, space to write on. So if it's a single uh, word or a single sentence, that will be uh, the right height for them. So I've created the, uh, the styles, or I've, I've uh, at least um, formatted the styles on my document that I want, the title, name, instructions, question marks, and the answer section. So one, two, three, four, five, six different styles. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add these styles to the gallery at the top. So the first thing I'm gonna do is click inside the student name section. I'm gonna right click on it. Uh, you get the context menu here, but you also get this little floating formatting toolbar at the top with styles on the right hand side. I'm going to click on styles and choose create a style so we can now create a style we can name it whatever we like uh, I think I'm going to call this student name because that kind of makes sense so student name click OK and you'll see straight away that in the gallery at the top we've now got that style student name to the style gallery uh, let's do that again for the test title so I'm going to uh, click in there and I'm going to right click, choose styles, manage, uh, sorry, create a style, and then this will be test title, like that. Click OK, and again, you can see that added to our gallery at the top. Again, let's go to the instructions one, right click, styles, create a style, and we'll just call this instructions. This one here, I know we changed all the uh, font at the beginning, but of course that's not the default uh, font for our normal document. We changed that at the beginning. So this is now size 12 Arial Nova Light, left aligned. So we'll right click, styles, create a style, and we'll call this question, like that. Uh, then this one is the mark, so it's bold, right aligned. So we'll use style, create a style, marks. And each time I do this, you can see these styles being added to my gallery. We've got the instructions, marks, question, student name, test title. Now we just need the answer section as well. So we'll right click on this, styles, create a style, and we'll call this answer. It's best to use just one or two words, make it really clear so that you can spot that easily at the top of the gallery. So there we are, now that's the, uh, the styles in there. What I'm gonna do um, now just to show how we would apply this to the rest of them, um, I can simply select all of these uh, apostrophes which I use to uh, identify where the lines would be and I can click answer, there we are. Um, and all my marks, I can simply select those and choose marks. And in fact, there we are, that's my test done. Uh, but of course, you wouldn't have to create all these styles every single time, that would be a nonsense. So what we'll need to do now is to make sure that these styles are saved um, in our gallery. So I'm just gonna right click on one of them here. Uh, I'm gonna choose uh, modify. And at the bottom there, we're gonna click new documents based on this template. So this is the normal template that we use, the, the default blank document. So every new document that we create using that default blank document would include this um, style. So new documents based on this template for the title. Uh, we'll do that for the uh, student name as well, uh, for the question, for the marks, and for the instructions, and finally for the answer. Oops, and there we go. Uh, now I'll just save this test. Uh, let's just save this uh, just on my desktop, we'll do for the moment. Um, and I'll just call this example, there we go. Uh, I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna close my other document, I won't bother saving that. There we go. And now uh, what I'm gonna do is open up Word. So a new blank document. 
Where we are, new blank document. And you'll see at the top there are all the styles that I created earlier. So now if we take any test that we've just created using blank uh, document, so if I just reduce the margins, paste that in there. Um, and now once we've done a plain text thing, because we've created all of this before, it's all been saved. I can now simply choose um, student name, test title, instructions, uh, the questions, one, two, three, choose the question format, the marks, one, two, three, choose the marks format, and the answer section, one, two, three, like that. Oops, one, two, three, and the answer section. And there we are, within seconds, we've turned a plain text document into a really nicely formatted uh, document here, which is consistent. It has a consistent look, a consistent style. We know it's all formatted and that will save a great deal of time. So I hope you found this useful. If you did, please do give this video a thumbs up. It would be awesome. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please do click the subscribe button. And if you click the little bell just next to it, then you'll be notified when a new video goes live. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions, please do leave them below in the comments section. I do read all comments and I do try to reply, to, uh, reply as quickly as I possibly can. Uh, so thank you very much indeed for watching. Leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.